just if we're looking at EU-US relations, they're not always in, in the best of places, are they? Especially with the recent, again, threat by the US that it may uh, add more tariffs onto EU products. Um, in such a climate then, uh, will the EU be able to, do you think, stand up for itself, uh, for stand up for EU European businesses? We, of course, know that, uh, that, that you know, European um, air, airplane manufacturers, for example, had signed deals with Iran, and those deals have now, of course, fallen apart. I believe ATR, though, of Italy was able to still deliver some planes uh, within the deals that they had signed, but other deals have fallen apart, essentially. Um, will Europe do what's best for Europe, or will it remain, essentially, the American lapdog in this issue? Okay, um, um, that's a very good question. But uh, let me uh, just emphasize in the beginning that when we're talking about the EU and European uh, Union politics or European politics, EU is not actually the main actor. So we shouldn't uh, uh, expect, uh, you know, major differences or uh, initiatives by uh, the new um, um, uh, senior administration uh, administrators uh, from the EU. So. It doesn't really matter who is actually the president of the European Commission, uh, the parliament. It is the three main um, um, uh, players in the European Union politics that they are actually the drivers uh, of, uh, you know, if, if there's uh, not such a thing as a common European uh, um, foreign policy. Mm. So, like you said, yes, there are uh, actually uh, many economic interests for uh, the European uh, uh, common market that uh, there are many opportunities uh, for uh, opening and lifting the sanctions uh, to Iran. But unfortunately, this is the big question. For the uh, last uh, few decades, Europe actually is struggling to uh, articulate an independent uh, uh, policy, an independent foreign policy, independent from uh, actually U.S. interest in the region.